We have another very critical Tesla stock update and an update on the broader markets. The markets are in free fall yet again as we are panicking because the Fed is quite simply asleep at the wheel. Yes, they are asleep at the wheel. I will go over exactly what is happening in our markets, go over some charts. We do have investor AI sentiment as well. Investors starting to turn pretty dang bearish and we do have signs of an upcoming recession. Now, on top of that, Tesla huh, has some breaking news today. They're looking to expand into India, not with an EV factory, but with a battery storage factory to make power walls and mega packs. This could actually be a very big deal for Tesla's business. We have all of this and much more here for you in this video. If you like to make money and you want to make more of it, if you want to reach financial freedom as quickly as possible, or at the very least, stay up to date with everything that's happening every single day with Tesla or the broader markets, hit that like button. Let everyone know that you are an investor in Tesla and you want to better your future by hitting, hitting that like button as well as subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and break down all of this information. In a new report from Reuters, Tesla proposes building a battery storage factory in India. Tesla has drawn up plans to make and sell battery storage systems in India and submitted a proposal to officials seeking incentives to build a factory. Two people aware of the plan said as Elon Musk continues a push to enter the country. Tesla has been in talks about setting up a new electric vehicle factory in India to build a car priced around $24,000 for weeks, with discussions overseen directly by Prime Minister Modi. Its renewables push, however, has not been reported so far. So this is actually brand new information as of today. Now, in recent meetings in New Delhi, Tesla proposed supporting the country's battery storage capabilities with its Powerwall, a system that can store power from solar panels or the grid for use at night or during outages, said the sources who declined to be named as the matter is confidential. Now, this actually makes sense. It says right here that last year, India faced its worst power crisis in more than six years due to coal transportation problems, while delays to adding coal and hydropower capacity have increased the risk of nighttime power cuts when solar energy is not available. The country is targeting an increase in non-fossil fuel power cap capacity to 500 gigawatt hours by 2030. 30 from 186 gigawatt hours now so roughly 3xing or two and a half xing their total fo non-fossil fuel energy usage they're gonna need to be able to store a lot of that energy and tesla power walls might make a very good choice here to store that excess power Considering a Tesla Powerwall can cost $10,000 or more depending on where you live, and a Megapack can cost well over a million, this could be a pretty big deal. And a lot of people are opposed to Tesla creating an EV factory in India because of the taxes on just the vehicles they sell. It's like 100% import taxes. Well creating a battery facility an energy storage facility in india could make a lot of financial sense given india in just the next six years again needs to almost 3x their energy storage capabilities there could be a lot of demand for tesla energy products and this is something that is not priced into tesla stock the same way deliveries are priced into Tesla stock. Neo has officially unveiled their first smartphone. Pricing starts around $900 with delivery starting September 28th. Neo said it expects at least half of its users to buy it. Should Tesla create their own phone and would you buy it? Let me know down below in the comment section. Elon Musk says bringing up a large training cluster of H100s is currently extremely difficult. Same was true of the A100s when they first came out, but now they run smoothly. This is in response to this X post that says... When your NN finished training on an H100 cluster after a week and all you get is tens of gigs worth of NA 
NAS. If you're curious what NAN means in computing, it stands for not a number. It is a particular value of numeric data type, often a floating point number, which is undefined or unrepresentable, such as the result of zero divided by zero. So basically, no progress. Which, this does not come as a shocker, H100 GPUs and a cluster of 300 hundred million dollars worth roughly ten thousand of these h100 chips worth thirty thousand dollars a piece you can imagine it's not going to be an easy task to get them all to work in sync and function as essentially one supercomputer it's going to take a little bit of time but once you are there and once they are operational you should see very rapid progress on full self-driving so it's one of those things, it could take a little bit of time, but once you are online, you should see some results pretty soon. This is pretty exciting news, shared to us from Tesla Chan on X. It's a picture of Highlands that are being shipped to each store in China. And you can see the Tesla store logo in the background. Now, what a lot of people have been confused about is some of the low delivery numbers we have seen over the past couple of weeks in China. That is because the Model 3 Highland was produced in Shanghai, but you actually did not get permits to sell the Highland in China just until a couple of days ago. So the actual delivery of these Model 3s should be starting any day now. Really, right now you could start seeing deliveries. That should start to be represented in some of the insurance registration data but until now you have not seen that and production has obviously been cut back on the model y and some of the other models that are sold in china to start producing even more of the model threes so this should be good news for tesla over the next coming weeks as tesla chan says on x he cannot wait for the fourth quarter and you can see even more of your highlands being transported and this is a highland right here in red this is the normal model 3 above it and you can see i mean the highland just looks cooler but there is multiple highlands at least here on the bottom row i that looks like a Highland if I can see correctly as well. So quite a few are being shipped locally now in China. We now have a new wrap for the Cybertruck. This one is a little strange to be honest. Kind of looks cool, but it's a kind of darkish blue looking camo. Let me know what you think is your favorite wrap you have seen so far on the Cybertruck. Personally, I mean, this is a funny one because they're trolling the F-150. But I personally like the Snow White rap the most. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Also in the news, Jaguar has signed an agreement with Tesla to provide drivers of its next-gen EVs with access to Tesla's supercharger network in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. All new Jaguars sold in the region from 2025 will have full integration of the NACS charger port. Again, if you don't get on board, you will get left behind. And I think a lot of automakers are starting to figure that one out. The UAW union said on Wednesday that 190 workers went on strike at a Mercedes supplier ZF's plant in Alabama, demanding higher pay and better health care benefits. This follows news that we seen yesterday that GM and Stellantis just laid off more than 2,000 additional workers because of the UAW strike. Now, GM said because of the strike, the workers laid off Wednesday will not be eligible for the supplemental unemployment benefits it normally pays. So you have about 1,700 workers that just got laid off and are now making $362 the week, the maximum federal unemployment wage. So this very soon could have negative impacts on the economy, and you're already starting to feel it now if you live in places like I do that you have a heavy UAW workforce like a Michigan 
you're starting to see the impacts on the economy firsthand. Here's some interesting news we covered last night as well. The lawyers who sued the Tesla board for excess pay want 10 thousand dollars an hour the lawyers want a judge to approve 229 million in fees or ten thousand six hundred ninety dollars an hour according to a september 8th filing filing in the De in the delaware's core of chancery the proposed fee award if approved would be among the largest ever to result from a shareholder lawsuit filed against a board the sum would be distributed among lawyers from four firms that spent several years building a case against the compensate compensation paid to Tesla directors from 2017 through 2020. These lawyers are seeking 25% of the total compensation, which is supposed to go to shareholders as a fee. I guess it pays to be a lawyer, right? The S&P 500 at the time of recording this video is down over 1%. Tesla stock is down 1.3%. 3% and keep in mind it's going to be very volatile you have been falling multiple days in a row this marks three red days back to back and the fourth day which was September 18th you were slightly green so you've been basically free falling on the markets for the past couple of days and the Fed just made things a whole lot worse yesterday. As I pointed out on Twitter, I made this post. If you guys have not followed me over there yet, definitely go ahead and give it your boy a follow. But number one, the markets did not like Fed Jerome Powell. He said the neutral rate long term could be higher. I don't think this is what the markets are panicking about right now. I think it's number two. The soft landing is not Fed Powell's base case. Huh. How is that not your base case? But you expect GDP at 1.5% in 2024. The math does not math with that statement. And that's what Fed Jerome Powell said. He said that a recession is more than likely. And then he tried to claw kind of claw that back towards the end of the press conference but at that point the markets were already panicking and as we looked at in the last video even on the closing bell Jeffrey Gunlock said no we're not going to get a single rate cut in the beginning of next year we're likely to get multiple rate cuts maybe double rate cuts by the beginning of next year so when you look at the summary of economic projections the prior projection for June we had was 1.1% for 2024 GDP. They raised this to 1.5%. Most individuals were expecting GDP estimates to actually fall for 2024, down to about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Not for GDP estimates to rise, given the UAW strike, the resumption of student loan payments, a looming potential government shutdown, and just inflation really causing consumers to slow down their spending 92 percent of consumers have cut back or slowed down on spending within the last six months and over 75 percent of consumers expect to slow down even further over the next six months how is that going to have a positive impact to gdp in 2024 how are your estimates rising markets are saying at least the Fed is asleep at the wheel. The Fed is not going to realize the pain they are putting on the economy until it is far too late, and they're more than likely going to push us into a deep recession. That's what the markets are telling you here today. And quite simply, stocks are selling off because you have seen a very aggressive rally since May, basically pricing out a recession, and now the markets are forced to price in a recession given the Fed's cluelessness of this situation. Maybe a recession would be avoidable if the Fed was taking steps now to cut rates, or at least by the end of the year, to relax the pressure on the economy a little bit. They're not doing that. In fact, completely the opposite. The Fed says maybe one to maximum two rate cuts in 2024. That's not going to be enough to avoid a recession. So take this as you will as far as the broader markets, but for your personal job safety, if you have a new job, if you are vulnerable to getting laid off, if we did see a hard kind of period for the economy, you need to be preparing yourself 
and making sure you have reserves and you're able to pay your bills if you were to get laid off tomorrow for an example you need to be prepared a recession is most certainly on the horizon at least that's my personal opinion that's what the data is telling us the fed's not going to tell you that they're asleep at the wheel but you need to be prepared this is going to make the markets even more sensitive to any economic data that we get that is either good or bad as you start to price in a recession like we have over the past three trading days now it's not fully priced in but you're starting to price it in if you start to get really good economic data well maybe there's some upside there but odds are we get worse and worse and worse economic data and that can mean more downside for the markets here on the day today the 10-year treasury is up 12 and a half basis points that is definitely helping to bring down stocks as interest rates go higher that puts pressure on valuations and as you can see the last time we were at these levels was back in october of 2022 and if you look at the s p during october of 2022 that was when markets were hitting their lows this was not a great time for stocks and you are substantially higher than that today two-year treasury yields not believing the fed as much only up about two basis points still at a new high of this cycle but not breaking out to the same degree as you are seeing with the 10-year bonds this is causing the 10-year and the three-month yield curve inversion to uninvert now what you'll see with this chart going back the last 50 years well when you start to get the inversion that's not usually when you're in a recession that's usually right before a recession you go inverted you stay inverted for a little while once you start to uninvert is basically right before you are in a recession now why is this well the bond market tends to be correct a lot more than the stock market so the stock market's been doing great this whole time we've started to uninvert even back in May, you've started to uninvert. You hit the low and started to uninvert in June, July, and August, and now September. Markets were still going higher. But the bond market si sitting here and saying, hey, we're going into a recession. That's why you're seeing this uninversion. And typically, when you start to uninvert, it can happen pretty quickly. And when it starts to move quickly, that's when you start to actually get downside in the market. So right now is a pretty vulnerable period for the markets if you're looking at the history of the yield curve inversions and then subsequent uninversions. Same thing with the 10 and the two year inversions. You hit the low back here in June and you have been uninverting ever since. At the low, you were inverted 1.06%. Today, you are only inverted 0.77%. So not quite as dramatic as the uninversion with with the 10 and the three month bond but still you are uninverting and again that's not great showing signs that we're heading into a recession a new ai investor sentiment has came out and you're seeing less people that are bullish which is pretty obvious the amount of individuals that are bullish has been falling since the week of september 6th and that was a high of 42.2% of investors, which were bullish. Today, 31.3% of investors are bullish. 34.1% of investors are neutral. And now 34.6% of investors are bearish. Now you're more bearish than neutral. That tends to be a pretty bad sign for the markets. That's usually when things start to take very much a negative turn for stocks. Kathy Wood recently just defended her price target on Tesla to in between 1400 and 2000 per share by 2027, but Kathy Wood has also sold around 50 million dollars worth of Tesla stock throughout September. The Arc Innovation trimmed its Tesla holdings by 32,080 shares, worth about 8.4 million on September 20th. That was yesterday. The day before the same fund dumped around 20.5 million 
billion worth of Tesla stock. ARK trimmed its total Tesla holdings by approximately 30,000 shares, worth around $8.4 million on September 14th. The investment firm cut its Tesla holdings by about 50,000 shares, worth $13.8 million on September 13th. And this one is simple, but your financial media tends to really construe things to fit whatever narrative they would like. Kathy Wood was buying Tesla stock like crazy when the stock was in the $100 range. Well, today it's 260 270 around there. On any given day, it fluctuates quite a bit. Sure, they've been selling because the allocation in their fund with Tesla is still over 10%. It's still around 11%. And Kathy Wood, she can be allocated up to 25% of her entire portfolio in one stock, but she likes to stay around 10%. So she has been selling some Tesla, putting that money into other stocks. If Tesla stock were to fall by a lot and get dramatically oversold again, well, Kathy would step back in and start buying more Tesla stock. I think this is just prudent investing strategy from an ETF manager, which that's what Kathy Woods is. So it's just her doing her job. Not that she's any more bullish or bearish on Tesla stock. Google Trends data for Tesla is actually starting to rise again. You're seeing quite the jump in especially the Model Y going from 43 to 55, the Model 3 going from 62 to 63 or uh, 64, and you are seeing quite the jump on the Model S as well going from 22 to 27 so you have been staying at elevated levels for tesla search interest and we have the model 3 the model x the model y and the model s pulled up here in google trends and you are starting to see an increase after the big increase we've seen with the release of the highland you started to come down and now basically everything is trending up again this could be because your highland is actually starting to hit the showrooms in china that would not surprise me if that is causing more interest in other tesla stock models as well including the model y tesla's option activity is not nearly as bearish as the stock price which is currently down about one percent trading right at about 260 dollars per share in the land of options you have seen 730 orders for options on Tesla, $174 million placed in these options with a positive order value of 61%. That's a pretty good ratio considering Tesla stock is negative on the day today. Tesla is showing strong support on the charts, bouncing right at about that 50-day moving average. This 50-day moving average is one of the three main ones, the 50, 100, and the 200-day moving average. So you've seen a lot of resistance back here in early September, late August, around the 50-day. You gapped up above that, and now it's a good sign you're finding support at this 50-day moving average. Now, if things are to get worse in the markets, then 240 would be the level that I would be watching next. And then your 100-day moving average at $237.50 per share. Give it a day or two, and this 100-day moving average is going to be around 240. That's going to make the 240 level even more significant. And then if things got really bad, and we're getting recessionary data, and maybe upcoming earnings are not great for companies, then you start to target $200 per share. But I think you have to get some company-specific news on Tesla, which would be negative, like price cuts to the Model Y or... Or the Model 3, which just don't look likely, or you have to see some kind of bad news for Tesla specifically to get down to $200 per share or sub $200 per share. I think if you can buy Tesla at $200 per share, well, that is a very good buy, and it's probably not going to stay down there for all too long. We maybe have the Cybertruck coming as soon as October 6th. That's what a lot of people have been guesstimating. And that's going to be a big catalyst to send Tesla stock higher, in my personal opinion. If you look at the MACD, the MACD has been positive and historically, when you go positive, you tend to go to about 17. You are currently at about half of one. So you have a lot of room to move to the upside before things start to look kind of overbought on the MACD. 
in which you are starting to curl down. The yellow line is starting to go under the blue line. Not a great sign. And the RSI is right at about neutral at 51.56. I would say overall, Tesla stock neither bullish nor bearish. Pretty, pretty neutral. I mean, overall, there's there's no clear direction here with Tesla, and I think Tesla is just simply going to follow the overall market. So if you're bearish on the markets, then short term, you probably shouldn't be that bullish on Tesla. If you're bullish on the markets, then yeah, you should be pretty dang bullish on Tesla, and I think that's the easiest way to break this all down. So that is going to do it for this video. We covered a lot of ground in a relatively short amount of time. If you like these kind of videos, hit that like button. If you want to stay up to date with these videos and get notified every time they come out, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. If you want to take it a step further, come support the channel as well as come trade with us every time we make trades to hedge out our portfolio or go long on Tesla go long and other stocks quick trades uh, you know day trades swing trades long term leaps buying shares we do it all link down below in the description of this video you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one